And please welcome Joseph Mulroy. It was 1983. I had moved to New York to learn how to write a Broadway musical. I was in my mid-twenties. My job as a ticket taker for the Schubert organization gave me the opportunity to see and learn from virtually every show that opened on Broadway in the 1980s. But more important, much more important, it was because of that job I met the love of my life, Marie de la Palm. Back home in California, my mother was battling terminal breast cancer. To amuse her, I wrote letters every day about my adventures in the Big Apple. In doing so, I chronicled my, the blossoming of my love for Marie. These letters, carefully saved by my parents, are the basis for the true story to be reenacted for you tonight by Della Ram Kamare and Evan Strand. Dear mom and dad, I made a new friend today, Marie de la Palm, a young, tall, beautiful dancer choreographer who loves American rock and roll. She's from France but doesn't walk like a duck or pull her pretty dark brown hair back like all the other ballerina types. How did we meet? Why ticket taking, of course. She hurt her knee and decided to take the afternoon off and came to see her fellow countryman, Marcel Marceau, for inspiration. We struck up brief conversation before the show and during intermission. After the show, it's my job to stand at my exit door and help everybody out the door. Well, I decided to switch doors with an usherette so I might have a chance to run into her again. After asking her how she enjoyed the show, I found out that she was a dancer. And she found out that I was a composer. The other ticket taker, Larry, a flamenco guitarist, came up to me and said that he had some business to attend to during the shows. So the jam session we planned in between wasn't a good idea. I was free. So I turned to Marie, and I said, would you like to go for coffee? It was so uncalculated and unplanned, except the exit door switch, of course. I asked her if there was any particular place she'd like to go, and in her sweet accent, she replied, Ah, uh, someplace not too shitty. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first of many malaprops that accented her otherwise fluent English. Marie's in San Francisco until Wednesday as a representative for Dance Skin. You know, shopping malls, meet Marie de la Palm. Modeling the stuff, answering questions, dancing a bit. She's the model for their brochures and catalogs while moonlighting in MTV music videos. Bruce Springsteen was a bit player in one of them. And after her hairdresser gushed that his, Bruce's crush on her was the talk of the set, she declined to be introduced. Who's Bruce Springsteen? He looked like a stagehand to me. <laughs> Thanks to my house manager, I brought Marie to see 42nd Street as my guest. She soaked up all that great choreography like a siphon. <laughs> <laughs> After the show, we took the Broadway line up to her apartment on 108th Street, picking up Cuban Chinese food on the way. We sat at a too high homemade table and bench, both built by Marie from plywood, and discussed C.S. Lewis. She had about five volumes on her table that she constantly referred to. She loaned me a copy of Mere Christianity to read, and then she pointed to a poster called The Magic of Dance with Dame Margot Fontaine, which was a PBS special at the time. She playfully said, If you can recognize any of the dancers, you want a copy of the poster. There she was. In a modern pose, wearing a blue, flowing dance outfit, blurred by time-lapse photography. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but no. No romance, no wet kisses, though I'm not ruling anything out. Just having fun and getting to know each other as friends. It 
was on this date that Marie told me that she didn't mess around, not just because the Roman Catholic religion preaches chastity, but also because she believes if you're involved with the wrong one, you might miss the right one. I'd never heard it put that way before. Having learned the previous year that it was much easier to get into relationships than to get out of them, this made a lot of sense to me. So I took her at her word, setting the tone for the joyous friendship and creative partnership that would bring us ever closer. Boy, what do I remember? A great Marcel Marceau show. That his guitar player friend was handsome, but Joe was the one who asked me out. After three years of New York City, I had become cautious of men asking me out. Another one who's either gonna fall in love with me or try to get me in his bed. But Joe inspired trust, and he was a musician. I wanted friends in that field, so I decided to give it a try. <laughs> Our little coffee hour was fun. I ordered cheesecake and probably talked a lot, but this guy listened great and loved rock and roll. I wanted our relationship to stay friendly and that we got to know each other's stuff. So I offered that he join some friends for dancing, and he seemed to like that idea, which was a plus. I also invited him to watch me dance in a run-through of the latest by an Alvin Ailey colleague. If I wanted to be appreciated and respected as a dancer, if we were to ever work together, we had to respect each other's work. Joe had that candid openness of those Americans. And I didn't realize at the time how comfortable his lack of judgment made me feel. He wasn't pushy or obnoxious or act like a pig. <laughs> Just nice, open and smiling. Security, as far as I could tell. Dear Mom and Dad, Sunday after the final performance, the staff was invited to a champagne and cake party for Mr. Marceau. So, I got him to autograph a program for Marie. I can't wait to give it to her. Now with breast cancer, having robbed Marie and me of growing old together, I lament that we didn't see instantly that we were perfect for each other. Truth is, given who we were, there probably weren't any shortcuts. When we finally did see the inevitable, our total surrender to each other was the peak experience of my existence. We owe our happy union to Marie's knee injury and Mr. Marcel Marcel.
Please help me thank Joseph Mulroy, Delaram Kamare, Evan Strand, Mona Jean Cedar interpreting, Lucas Soda interpreting, and Maritza Penger for Motion Tribe. Thank you.